How does that start for you when you say you self-reflect? on? Is it literally a conversation with yourself? Are you journaling? Uh, it's, it gets started in one other than journaling. I have a lot of conversations with myself. I truly believe that the most important conversation you have with, your, with, with anyone on any point of the day is the one with yourself. Yeah. What you say to yourself, how you encourage yourself, how you bring yourself down, that all affects your external interactions with other people. Yeah. I often believe that when you're um, temperamental, or and I could speak about this shit. I'm, I, have, I have everybody knows <laughs> that I'm, when I blow up, it's bad. But it that comes from a lot of trauma that I went through, a lot of resentment that I kept inside, right? Yeah. And that's self criticism, that's self reflection, and I know that. And I, you know, I'm working on it. It's something that I'm not proud of, but it's also part of it's part of the fuel and the engine that's gotten me to where I am today. I just need to now, instead of my engine running on junk, it needs to run on clean hydrogen or something yeah. like that, right? <laughs> Renewable fuels or something yeah. like that. We're trying to be sustainable and ESG conscious here at the Blast Fly Off podcast. <laughs> but it needs to it needs to start from within you. And for however you get your start, through a therapist, through conversation with your friends, through conversation with your girlfriend, through conversation with yourself, it doesn't really matter. It just needs mm-hmm. to start. And I think a lot of people, when they have that conversation – uh, with themselves at night and they're with just with themselves and to whatever God or entity or whatever, whoever they pray to, I think a lot of people don't like what's going through their mind. And I think that's why people avoid those conversations. And I yeah. think they do everything and anything to avoid having to deal with themselves and when they have to look themselves in the mirror because they're not proud of who they are. They're not proud of where they are, where they're at. Um, and they'll just do anything to sort of avoid and sort of block themselves from having those thoughts. So yeah. what about you? What did, how does it start for you? Um, for me, it's just, um, like I said, I'm I'm very, I think I'm self-aware. Or I just catch things that I'm not proud of, you know. Um, and it's, you know, I, I sometimes have that moment where I'm like, damn, this this is not cool. You know? <laughs> like, this is not cool. Whether it's, you know, uh, from personal relationships, whether it's career-wise and i like you know you know like yeah i could i could put in more yeah or i should be here and i'm not doing the things right uh that needs to be done to get to a certain level so um that's that's where it comes where it's just i have these moments of thoughts and then trying to just uh, redefine myself in that and before i used to look at things as far as um i wanted to be a jack of all trades Mm -hmm. you know and kind of dip and dabble into many things but um i think now my focus is i want to narrow that down into like just being laser focused on one thing because i find out for myself and it may work for different people but for myself is when i focus on too many things then i don't really accomplish that goal to the fullest potential you know so i right now my main focus is if i want to have this type of career i want to focus on the podcast it's that should be it, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and that that really just just helps me and just continuing to and I'm I think I'm not my harshest critic, so because yeah, right, no you know one, yourself, nobody you know. can criticize you. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> but what what do you think happened along the way? I mean, do you think I'll 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 go ahead and admit, and maybe this will help you jumpstart or give you context as to what what you behind my question. I think that twenty five year old John was way more certain about what he wanted than the almost 35-year-old John. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, as I've gotten more, I've gotten more lost. (laughs) It's like like weird, right? Like, as I've accomplished more, I've gotten more lost as to what is it that I want the rest of my life to go, right? Because there was always a goal when I was younger. Graduate high school, graduate college, graduate law school, get the first job, progress through your first job. But now that I'm, like, almost seven years in, I'm a senior associate, it's sort of like... I'm getting closer and closer to like that when they consider you for partner and whatever, and not not saying that they're gonna make me up or anything like that, but um, it's sort of like okay, like is that something I really want to go to? Do I want to commit myself to that? Uh, do I? How's this podcast gonna fit into that? How's my relationships gonna get affected with this? Because it's a very all-consuming career, yeah. so it's sort of like you know you're you're kind of like hezy stepping, you know what I mean? Like you're not yeah. sure about. I mean, you're a basketball player. You can see when somebody's not sure about what move they want to do, yeah. right? So. Yeah. And then you turn the ball over, yeah. right? So, then, <laughs> so that I'm afraid of turning the ball over. And in thinking so much about me not wanting to turn the ball over, I turn the ball over. Yeah. And I've done that multiple times over the last few years. So I want to know, what do you think happened along the journey for you? Man, I think, like you said, 25-year-old Mike uh, 
just had a raw innocence where it's like, I just want to do it. You don't care what anybody thinks. And you don't feel like, you, you feel like you have the leeway to mess up. If you mess up, it's okay. Yeah. But I guess the more you know, the more knowledge that you gain, yeah, yeah. the older you become, um, it's kind of like, how many times do I have left to get this wrong? You know? Yeah. So that's that to me is a, is a big thing where I'm hesitating because I'm like, is this right? Is this the right direction? Is this the right way to go? Should I just stay comfortable in what I have and be happy right. and content? Or no, should I let this go and try to jump for something else? So that's a that's a really yeah. good one. Do you think that's also because we have a certain quality of life now, right? And we attach the quality of life is kind of in material in a sense, right? Because you're attaching it to the type of apartment that you have, the type of restaurants you can go eat, the type of yeah. flights you can get on, the type of experiences you can experience. Is when I was 25, bro, like <laughs> I was happy if I was able to go out <laughs> once a month. Now yeah. we're going out multiple times a week, yeah. <laughs> spending a couple hundred dollars, right? Doing it. Yeah. So do you think that there's any, you've gotten so comfortable with your floor that you forgot to look up to see, wow, there's a lot of ceiling left I could go get up. Because before oh, I wasn't man. worried about the floor because yeah. I was already on the ground. <laughs> so I'm over here like, this is all I can reach for. So I'm going to keep going up. But now you're like, oh, if I fall back down, it, it, it looks kind of looks kind of deep that, that, exactly. that drop it's like, and that's like for how long can you be down for you know yeah and so and but i always pride myself as um and throughout my life money comes and goes and all that and i'm not a i, I guess i'm saying i'm not afraid of the floor but you know <laughs> at the end of the day we are <laughs> i think i think we are a little afraid of the floor i look I'm, I'm afraid of the floor but you can't be more afraid of the floor than the excitement you'll get from reaching the ceiling 